Hey everybody, welcome to the first video tutorial service tutorial, uh, April 2005. My name's Keith, I'm your host for this evening, or this morning, depends when you're downloading your file. Anyways, um, the first topic that we're going to cover in our tutorial service is posing. We're going to cover posing for a while, uh, and there's a reason why we're going to cover posing for a while, because it's really important. Um, in fact, I'm of the mind that posing is probably the most important thing that you can do in animation. Everything else is gravy. Uh, and I've got somebody who can back me up on that. Ham Lusk is one of the, the nine old men uh, who's passed on now, but he was one of the nine old men uh, at Disney. And uh, he has this quote here about animation. He says, your animation is only as good as your poses. You can have good timing, good overlapping action, good follow through, but if your poses are not strong and to the point, meaning telling the story, you don't have good animation. And I believe that's very true. Uh, I see a lot of emphasis on polish in uh, CG animation these days. I see a lot of emphasis on making sure that lots of little things are okay and you get the overlaps and stuff, but the things that's lacking is a sense of good posing. Understanding what communicates a character. Um, and every image of a pose could be an illustration. It has to be an illustration. It has to read instantly. It has to be something that you get right away. Um, and the thing about posing is that it's the gateway to character. And because it's the gateway to character, that's the gateway to your telling your story. They say that story is king. Um, story is not necessarily king. It's more like a prince, a crown prince perhaps. But the only reason that story means anything to us is because we care about our characters. If we don't care about our characters, we don't really care what happens to them. Therefore, the story is meaningless. Let's take a look at this slide right here. There's two things that allow you to understand a character, and they are found in the pose. Uh, those two elements are appeal and emotion. Uh, they come from two sides of the same coin. The first part of the pose has to be appealing. Now, appealing doesn't necessarily mean it's fuzzy bunnies with big brown eyes and looks cute and you go, aww. Appeal just means it's something that you, you people can respond to. They're, they're naturally drawn to it. They can look at a character and immediately identify who they are and have the structure within themselves to understand what that character is thinking. Uh, good character design is very important for this. That's why some of the best characters are the simplest ones because they're easy to read immediately and figure out, hey, I know that person or I can at least recognize that person and I can tell the difference between when they're sad and when they're happy. And that's why stuff like Wallace and Gromit is just great. Gromit the dog has absolutely no mouth whatsoever to work with yet because he's so easily understandable from his appeal we can understand exactly what he's talking about when he's not even talking uh, and that that appeal is as, as a gateway to understanding their emotion and that emotion shows who they are as a character so emotion has to be able to be something that you can draw out of a character so we can understand who they are so appeal and emotion together are, are elements of a pose and the character is in the pose. Buzz holds himself differently than Woody. Shere Khan holds himself differently than Bagheera. Mowgli holds himself differently than Baloo. And it's just a single image can communicate this entire thing. And it's all in the appeal and in communicating the emotion, there's your character. Now you set two characters in a place and you have them conflict with each other and then you've got a story. But you have to care about the characters first. So that's why I don't necessarily think that story is king. I think character is king. If you care about your characters, that means you can understand the posing. Then everything is building up. And that's why the Pixar films are so so popular and they're so successful is because they understand character. And their characters mean a lot to them. And when you take a look at it, their poses mean a lot to them as well. And their stuff is very good because of that. Poses reveal character, and characters drive story, then the better we are at creating poses that are appealing, that show a character, that um, give us a window into their soul at that moment as they react to a moment in the story, as they react to yet another character, then the better we are at constructing our poses to allow people to understand and access that character, the better we are at telling stories. And so the specifics now um, are really important about, okay, what makes up good posing? 
And so that's what we're going to go to next is we're going to start delving into the specifics and we're going to do this for probably a couple months at least of really figuring out all the little details and all the things to keep in mind for building good solid posing. Because ultimately our storytelling is really only as good as our ability to express our characters right at the core issue of it. Those still frame illustrations of who this character is at that moment really capture what the story is about and what that character is about. So let's move into some specifics as to what makes up good poses. One of the red herrings about CG animation is that it's 3D. Oh look, it's 3D. It's got dimension. Baloney. If it's up on a screen, which 99.9% .9 of this stuff is, then it's two-dimensional imagery. That's all it is. It may be fancy shading. It may be fancy lighting. It may, ha it may be a fancy drawing, but ultimately it's just shapes on a two-dimensional plane which are communicating to us the concept of character. And understanding that, we have to look at our poses from a two-dimensional standpoint, more so than you'd think it would be necessary, especially in CG animation. But you have to look at it from that two-dimensional understanding. And because of we, we're looking at things two-dimensionally, as an audience, we have to think about them as animators two-dimensionally. Shapes on screen tell a story. And there's a whole understanding of what makes a shape appealing or a shape communicate and we have to bring this knowledge back down into our posing and to be able to grasp it and to communicate it. If we don't understand what makes a certain shape aggressive versus another shape being passive then how in the world are we ever going to communicate that to audience? We're not going to be able to and it's just that simple. So it stands the reason that if we're going to start focusing and training our minds to look at our poses and our characters from a two-dimensional aspect, since that's how our audience experiences them, then let's start breaking down what goes into creating good poses from a two-dimensional standpoint. One of the most interesting things about great poses is that great poses, even though they're still, have motion in them. Let's take a look at this right here. I have this little expression, and let's say a guy is saying, now look here, you! It's it's a rather accusing and aggressive move. If you take a look at the the picture on the top left, that's rather static and dull, and it just basically stinks. And then you take a look at the one on the lower right, and now there's something happening. Now there's there's a kind of a force to it. Um, and if we if we take a look at just analyzing the line of action on these things, uh, we'll see that there is no action on the upper left hand corner one, and that there is action on the lower right hand one. And that's the thing we're going to cover a lot in this first one, is line of action. If we take a look at the line of action here on the upper left hand one, you'll see it's mostly vertical and horizontal. Nothing much going on there. Um, and it's not very interesting. If we take a look at that, there's, it just lacks direction. Um, the thing about horizontal and vertical lines is they're fairly neutral. They don't have any real meaning to them. Now, they're useful, but um, in and of themselves, they're fairly neutral. There's not much of a force here. I mean, you could look at it and follow the finger, but you know, if you squint your eyes, you're not really getting much out of it. Uh, there's no leading of the of the uh, viewer's eye, and the the pieces of the body are not moving together in order to give us something to to drive our eye in a particular area. And there's no cinematic tension whatsoever. Now, if we take a look at the 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 lines of action and and how the lines are flowing on the lower right hand one, we'll see there's a lot more going on. We'll see that there's a definite strong screen right direction to everything that's going on and it all works together everything from the offside hand on the left running up through his shoulders all the way down through uh, the fingertip uh, from his hips on up into his head and you see there's a very strong angle to it um, and so that strong direction is really important because that that is what is going to give all of your poses that sense of motion to them even though they're sitting still the best poses have motion in them. And there's force to it, there's a flow to the image, we're guiding the viewer's eye to the right, uh, and there's a tension inside of this kind of inside of this kind of a presentation. So we're gonna try and look for these kinds of lines of action. Now, even though there's still images, even though poses aren't really moving yet, we want that sense of motion in them so that we have that tension, so that we can move our story forward with uh, good storytelling. If we're gonna go ahead and define what a line of action is, um, the way I think of line of action is I'm, I'm looking at where the character's force is driving. And so a line of action is the main indicator of if you were to draw the force through the character from 
toe to head. Now there can be multiple lines of action, but there's a primary one and then there's accenting ones, which we'll get into later. But the primary line of action is going to be that thing that indicates the general force of the character in their pose. Again, the best poses have motion in them. Another thing you want to do with your poses is that you do not want every pose to be the same volume. Um, think of the extremities or the extremeness of your pose uh, in terms of volume, like you know, like music. Uh, if music is always loud and always the same tone, it hurts. We don't like it. We turn it off. We don't listen to it. Um, what makes music appealing and interesting is the play back and forth between louder, to louder tones and softer tones and uh, the rhythms of faster and slower. Um, the rhythm of faster and slower is a timing thing. Again, we'll get timing a little bit. But uh, the volume uh, or the, the strength of what you're trying to say um, is important to try and vary that. In fact, it's, it's a really good idea that for every scene that you plan, choose one pose, which is the pose. It's the one that gets the entire thing, the whole thing hinges on that pose. And it's always bigger, more extreme, or more important than all the other ones. Um, Dash said it best in The Incredibles. If everything is special, then nothing is special. So save your energy, save your your extreme, the extremeness of your line of action for those poses that are really key to getting the idea across. I mean, the ones that really, really, really nail it and work everything in around it. What makes mountains beautiful is that there's always one that's taller than the other ones. Um, and the smaller ones lead up and they bring your eye up to the mountain. Uh, the Grand Tetons is great because these these fantastic mountains just rise up out of the plain and they just scream for you to look at them. And even so, the, the ones from the edge keep getting progressively higher and higher until you get to the one that's the, the tallest. And that's where our eyes go. And so when you're working on planning your poses, pick one the one that's most important and make that the one that you really put your energy into to communicate the story. The other ones are important as well. I mean you don't want to slough off on them and be lazy but you don't want every pose to be big. Uh, one, of, one of the weaknesses of one of my earlier animation tests is that um, I made all the poses too big. Here's that, uh, that 10 second club piece from a while back where we had um, characters doing the line from So I Married an Axe Murder about uh, hating the colonel. Oh, I hated the colonel with his wee beady eyes and that smug look on his face. Oh, you're gonna buy my chicken. Oh. See, one of the problems with this clip, even though it was fun to do and, and I really liked the character and, and there was a lot of, I had fun doing it, I just gotta admit. And it's, a, it's, a, it's entertaining and it's amusing, but one of the problems is that all the poses are just the same size. And so what happens is that everything becomes really loud and uh, uh, and it's just like, ah, stop. Give me one thing to look at. Um, there is a point there where he kind of does come inside of himself and that's fine, but even then it could have been better. Um, so you always got to try and find ways to make your stuff better. And the, one of the reasons why this is no longer on my reel is because it's just every pose is the same as far as the intensity of it. And that shows a lack of understanding on my part at the time. Uh, I'm much better than that now. Well, okay, maybe a little bit better. Okay, some days I forget completely. But still, it's a good thing to keep in mind. One of the things that you'll find uh, very experienced animators will focus on when they're actually working up their poses and their plannings is they're going to look for ways to reverse or to build contrast in how their lines of action play together. Uh, let's take a look at this one particular scene that I animated for Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas. Um, this scene right here is a... In, cute little interaction between Mickey and Pluto after Mickey's found Pluto and we'll see that there's a very strong line uh, in Mickey not super strong but there's a definite left screen leaning he's reaching out towards Pluto he's got his hand on his chin so there's a there's a closeness there and this is where he says I'm so glad you're home and the next image we see that he stepped back it's all in the same scene but he says this is where he says who's my pal now you'll notice if you go back and forth between them that there's a very strong reversal. If you take the line from the left foot of Mickey, screen right foot, on the first one and draw it up through his head, you'll see that there is a, a fairly decent screen left indication of his line of action. And then you take a look at the other one and you'll see that that same line 
is that from the foot right up through the head is now a very strong screen right indication. And the hand, um, his right hand is generally still in the same position, but one is one is intimate and drawing in, the other one's presentational. And then when we go to the next part where he goes in, he says, come on, who's my pal? And they start kind of playing a game of catch. Again, you'll see that Mickey is, again, screen left. And what you have here, if you take a look at these three things together, is what we call reversal of the line of action. And it's very strong. And the reason why you want to do this is because it builds contrast into your, into your poses. If your poses are all the same, then your character isn't doing anything. Um, and if your character is not doing anything, then your story is not doing anything. And why in the world would we want to watch what you're doing? So building this kind of reversal into the line of action is necessary so that your character has a sense of movement. Uh, it's, it's a build up and release of energy. I'm a big guy on thinking of animation in terms of energy. All motion, all story, anything that's accomplished is, is, re is acquired by the build up and release of energy and it happens in narrative, it happens in character, it happens in internal combustion engines. We build up energy, we release the energy, we punch a piston and we turn a cylinder and we drive the car. Same thing here. We build an energy inside of a pose with a strong line of action one direction and then we release that energy and we go in the opposite direction. Reversals are very important. Uh, taking a look at um, another scene in Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas, this is where Mickey gets uh, his Christmas stuff knocked off of his car, you'll see that there's a, a very strong uh, screen right lean over like he's just afraid to touch anything because it's almost broken. And then this is just after a snowplow comes and rips away everything. And you'll see that he's got uh, a completely opposite reaction. He's no longer leaning over into screen right, but now he's leaning up and back into screen left. And then after he realizes that not only is the stuff damaged, it's doubly destroyed, he goes into a kind of a slumping down inside of himself pose and that's again coming off of it. It kind of splits the difference between the two. So you go from uh, an extreme right screen bend to an extreme left screen bend and then he kind of settles down inside of himself down the middle. And here a vertical choice is a good choice because straight up vertical lines of action are great for emphasis because they're so unnatural. They're, they, we, we want to build this line of action and this energy into our poses and so when we choose a time to emphasize something we get rid of that thing. So it's like if you take a look at a blank piece of white paper and you put a black dot on it, what's the thing you look at? You look at the black dot because it's the thing that's different. And the thing that's different is that contrast that's going to pull our eye. So if we're always using strong lines of action, the time we want to emphasize a particular act attitude or a moment is we'll choose that straight up and down vertical line of action as a way of emphasis to get the point across. Think of, you know, an exclamation point is, you know, a dot and a straight line off the top. You don't write an ex exclamation point at the end of every sentence. After a while it starts getting tedious to read. So what you want to do is you want to savor it and use it where it makes the most sense. And so the vertical line of action is a great thing to use as an accent. Well, this is a good place for us to stop for this first video. Um, there's a whole lot more on posing. We're going to get into that in the next couple of videos. We're going to start breaking it down. This one right here was really to kind of get the idea across of why posing is important. Lay some ground rules and some basics as to what to look for in poses. Um, got into some details, but um, subsequent videos down the road are going to be even more detailed into the actual practical application of how to construct poses and things like that. But this is a good primer for us to get going. Um, I hope this has been beneficial to you. I hope it's been everything you've expected and more. And if it hasn't, go ahead and shoot me an email. Tell me what, you, uh, what you'd like to see. Maybe something different. Maybe something better. Whatever it is, feedback is welcome. You can go ahead and email me. And uh, thanks again for playing along. See ya.